following session. So here is Paulo. Hello, Paulo. How are you? Can you share? Yes, you are there. I cannot hear you, but uh, I can see you. So you are in charge of uh, session one. Paulo? Can you Can hear, hear me? me? Oh. Mm, yes, you are in two devices. It's... Yes, yes, because a little problem with the other. Let me check here. Can you okay. hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. We cannot see you, but uh, we can hear. Um, if you want to change the device, I, I can change the permissions. Anyway, uh, Miriana is the first uh, speaker in the first session. If Miriana wants to share the screen. Are you there, Paulo? Okay. Yes, I'm, I start again. Would you like to introduce the session? Hello, Miriana. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, perfectly, and we can see you also. So, so what, well, what shall Paolo I do? Paolo has some problems. The first session, I will introduce the session because we need to, to follow the time. Well, the first session is about the state of art in astronomy education. And uh, as first session is one of the most important, probably for many of the attendees, so uh, the idea is to show a, a, a diverse set of resources, uh, tools, and, uh, and uh, different uh, things devoted to, I don't know why, uh, who is uh, sharing this screen, Miriana, or who? Yes, it's me. Okay, perfect, perfect. Uh, the session is about the state of art, and the first uh, speakers, if you click on the on the arrows in the first session, Miriana, you can go to the um, speakers here. I just I just shared the screen, so can ah, you see so, well, please no no uh, stop sharing the screen. Stop this. Okay, stop share. Yeah, uh, I would uh, I will not uh, share the screen with the program. I just would like to introduce Miriana. She is living now in Ethiopia, uh, but she is not uh, a native. Uh, so uh, it's, it's uh, younger, but uh, it's very, very, very active in education. Um, the first talk is, uh, is about um, this topic, the uh, state of art in education. Uh, give me a moment. Oh, I have, uh, here it is. Um, well, the, the, um, the title is Development of Astronomy Research and Education in Africa. So, Miriana, now is, uh, the stage is yours. Okay, thank you very much, Beatrice. So, let me try to share my screen now. Yes, uh, you must share the... Yes, now is okay. Okay, perfect. Let me just go through the full screen mode. Okay, can you see now the full screen mode? Yes, perfectly. Okay, perfect. So thank you very much, uh, Beatrice, once again um, for introduction and uh, for organizing uh, uh, this uh, really important meeting for all of us. Uh, thank to you and all people who in one way or another were, were involved in the organization. Um, so as Beatrice mentioned, uh, I'm based currently in Ethiopia. Uh, I've been here for the past uh, uh, four years and um, uh, but I've been involved in uh, development of astronomy and um, um, in Africa over the past uh, more than 10 years. So I will a bit uh, update you about uh, really uh, many activities that are going on uh, on the continent in terms of the infrastructure development and research, but also education. Uh, 
So uh, I'm sure that uh, during this week we will hear a lot about uh, the importance of astronomy as a, as a tool for development and for reaching the SDGs. And here I just listed some of those points that uh, we shall not forget, uh, such as uh, its contribution to education, to promoting science, uh, to really strong uh, social economical growth. Uh, we have South Africa as one of the examples. Uh, we know that true astronomy over the past decades, we brought really a lot of development in terms of the technology, innovation, and then also that we can use it. Uh, we now hear every time more and more using astronomy for promoting peace, for diplomacy as well. And also when we come to the uh, fact that basically our daily life nowadays depends on the space-based and satellite data, we know how strong, uh, how strong contribution astronomy had in that as well. So with this uh, slide, I would like to put us a bit in the current uh, concept uh, of the digital revolution in which we are. And with COVID, we saw how important the uh, digital part of our society uh, is and uh, that still we have really several billions of people who stayed totally unconnected, totally out of the educational system because uh, of not having access uh, uh, to the uh, digital technologies. And uh, we know that astronomy contributed a lot to the digital re uh, revolution, starting from the invention of the Wi-Fi, and then uh, that is a fundamental part of the digital revolution. Nowadays, the computing, communication, GPS, imaging, that again are fundamental parts of the re digital revolution, and where astronomy again contributed a lot through the development, uh, development of the grid computing, satellite communications, atomic clocks, and contributing to navigation, positioning, and then CCDs as well, that currently are uh, really becoming uh, one of the fundamental parts of our um, uh, mobile communication. And putting Africa in uh, the concept of all of uh, this, of the digital revolution, is really dealing with the next, uh, uh, let's say, step, which is uh, all the new technologies and the big data, where we do have SKA nowadays as one of the really fundamental parts of these new technologies, where we can expect about 100 times uh, faster flow of data in the coming uh, years with the SKA. So we can call even uh, the digital revolution totally in line with the uh, SKA revolution as well. And Africa is and uh, will be in future really the fundamental part of it. So we are really through digital revolution transforming the world and Africa is the, the fundamental part of that transformation. And this is really becoming uh, the um, uh, continental uh, initiative. The vision is really there. So uh, the African Union in 2015 came up with the post-development agenda where the use of the space and geospatial technologies have been recognized as really important and fundamental for reaching the SDGs. Uh, also, uh, thanks to that, we have nowadays the African Space Agency, the first African space strategy, where again, astronomy is there as one of the important fields for reaching SDGs. And when we come uh, to the level of different countries, also many of the uh, African governments nowadays uh, share this vision. And over the past decades, we really saw a huge improvement in terms of the institutional development, uh, infrastructure development in both astronomy and space sciences. So here you can see a map. Um, uh, it's a bit of the summary of the paper that we published in 2018, where we gave the uh, where we spoke about the status of the astronomy and space science uh, in Africa. And uh, recently we launched uh, Astronomy in Africa survey so that we can uh, come up with the update of uh, this map that you can see here, where you can see that many countries are really uh, fully involved in uh, infrastructure development in either um, optical radio or uh, gamma ray uh, astronomy and then uh, astronomical research uh, as well. Um, I will now go briefly uh, uh, through some of the main um, developments that we um, uh, are having in, uh, in different parts of Africa. Radio astronomy is really becoming one, one of the important fields. So we now have in terms of the infrastructure, the SKA and AVN that are there. So we have, uh, as you know very well, South Africa with another uh, eight African countries that are fully involved in SKA. In 2017, the Memorandum of Understanding has been signed between uh, all of these countries to collaborate jointly on the development of radio astronomy. Ghana was the first country to convert the telecommunication uh, dish into the radio uh, dish. And now we have the Mirkat uh, running, 
from 2025, we will have the SKA phase uh, second, where the thousands of dish will be placed in different African uh, partner countries. Uh, then different smaller projects are going on in radio astronomy in Nigeria, Maur uh, Mauritius, Namibia, in terms of the radio astronomy. Namibia is now trying to build the very first millimeter wave telescope in Africa. Uh, Sarau is now there as a joint uh, between the SKA and Hartrau. Hyrax is a new project that is based also in South Africa at the University of KwaZulu-Natal. And as I mentioned previously, we now have a Mirkat with 63, 64 dishes uh, being fully uh, operational. So thanks to that, to these efforts, we now have images like this that all of you have seen uh, over the past, uh, basically now almost uh, two years, uh, with some of the um, um, most detailed uh, uh, information that we got from the center of our Milky Way, or for this, uh, uh, a giant optical galaxy that we can see here. We can now uh, observe again, thanks to Mirkat, the radio, huge radio lobes coming from this uh, galaxy with a lot of uh, uh, really details. Uh, and all of this, once again, is coming, uh, some of, once again, the, the best data coming from, from the African continent. In optical, a lot of uh, improvements have been done as well. So in Morocco, uh, the observatory is running very well, and uh, one of the uh, main project is uh, related with the uh, um, observations of the activity of the sun and then uh, detection of the extrasolar planets. In Ethiopia, we have uh, two small telescopes that are now fully operational, um, uh, one meter telescopes, and then uh, the site testing is going on in different countries for uh, placing in future um, a new optical telescopes, such as in Algeria, in Egypt, in Kenya as well. Uh, in Burkina Faso, there are, uh, the telescope has been already um, uh, shifted from Chile to, to Burkina Faso, and now the country is struggling to, uh, to place, to build the, the small observatory. And uh, as you know, in South Africa, we have a series of different observatories, including the, the SALT. And when we come to the X-rays, as you know, the HES is there uh, working really very well uh, in uh, Namibia in collaboration with, uh, with Germany. So uh, basically, this is in terms of the infrastructure Two development. Minutes, uh, Miriana. Of, uh, thank you very much, Beatrice. And a lot of um, uh, research is going on uh, uh, at different uh, institutes and universities. Remarkable progress has been also done in terms of the human capacity building uh, through the new postgraduate programs that have been uh, 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 initiated now in more than 15 countries. The IUOID uh, uh, supported many of the projects, as we heard in the previous uh, uh, lecture. Uh, NASP, NASP uh, uh, AVN, and ISP also contributed a lot over the previous, uh, over the past years in uh, forming the first master PhD students in astronomy in Africa. And a lot of work, basically now we do have uh, uh, public awareness outreach activities in almost all countries. And then the teachers trainings that are really active and contributing a lot to the uh, education in, uh, in Africa. Uh, we now have also African Astronomical Society being really very active since last year. The science committee is there, outreach committee, and since recently we established the new African Network of Women in Astronomy. So please see also the poster in session nine. Uh, also, this is a new strategy, African strategy for, for fundamental and applied physics that we just launched now in November uh, last, I mean, in, in, uh, in last month. And astrophysics and cosmology is there as well. This is a list of uh, several other initiatives, some of them already running, like AFIPS, uh, DARA, and uh, others that are uh, under the way. Um, and I will stop here uh, uh, due to the time, and I would like to finish uh, with this um, uh, slide where you can see some pictures uh, from the northern part of Ethiopia, where my colleagues during the total solar eclipse uh, in June uh, this year managed to bring astronomy to some of the remote uh, areas in, in the country. So thank you very much. Perfect. Uh, in, just in time. Very good. Thank you very much, Miriana. Uh, as you know, the questions will be at the end of the session, so we invite uh, the next speaker, uh, which is Sally Cooper. Sally, are you there? Hello, yeah. Hi. Yeah, perfect. Hello. 
try to share your screen. Uh, meanwhile, I will uh, present you. Sally Cooper is from the National Schools Observatory at the United Kingdom. And the title of uh, her uh, contribution is the National Schools Observatory Access to the University for All. So can you see my screen okay? It's full screen? Yes, very good. Great. Hi, so I'm Sally and I'm, um, I share my role. I'm manager of the National Schools Observatory. I share my role with um, Stacey, so I've included her here. Um, and I'll first of all tell you a bit more about the National Schools Observatory. So um, the idea of this project started around 16 years ago, actually pre that, that was when the telescope was made. So the Liverpool telescope is part of Liverpool John Moores University and the Astrophysics Research Institute here in the UK. The telescope itself is actually situated out in the Canary Islands on La Palma. Um, so it's a two meter telescope. The mirror is two meters. Um, an optical telescope and um, the important thing about it is that it's robotic and also autonomous and the autonomous as well as being robotic we often think of that as sitting from our computers from home or at the office being able to control a telescope somewhere in the world but the autonomous part of the telescope is really important for the school's project um, because that means that we don't have to worry so much about um, when things are appearing in the sky and teaching geometry and complicated geometry that even I get confused with to sort of primary school age kids. Um, so it really allows us to be flexible with that of who we can offer this project to. Um, so that's the telescope. It's also got um, a fairly unique design in its shell. So you can see in the top right hand corner, it's got this clamshell design to the way it opens. And that's to allow a really rapid response um, for the particularly for the professional astronomers but if it's moving between objects it allows it to swivel really fast and get on sky um, really quickly. Um, so the National Schools Observatory is essentially an ed education um, platform online and we have three different types of users on the website so we have teachers, students and users um, but we are anybody in the world can sign up um, for teachers and students, they um, have very special access and that is primarily to UK and Ireland schools um, and that's completely free to them. Um, but if you sign up as a general user, um, you still get to make observations. Um, some of the stuff is limited, but all the rest of the website is open. All of our activities are open. Um, and all of our archives, so if anybody else has ever requested any data, um, all of our archive is also free to all um, general users. So you can see across the top um, of the website, we have a banner that says about news, go observing, discover, learn. And those are all our different areas. So go observing is the telescope interface. And that is the tool behind the website that allows us to directly connect to the Liverpool telescope and allows um, students and teachers to make observations. Um, we have around 2 million um, visitors to the website each year. Um, oh, sorry, we have about, yeah, 2 million visitors to the year um, and we make around 200,000 observations um, to date. Um, a little breakdown of who our users are. So um, on the left-hand side where we've got um, the little pie chart, shows that we have around 10% teachers and 15% general users and the rest of the students. Now the teachers might look like a small amount of number but per teacher we have anywhere between one student and up to several hundred students um, attached to each teacher. So increasing the teachers helps us really increase the number of students that we're actually getting out to. Um, the NSO project um, in the UK works a lot with the teachers um, here um, in being able to deliver classroom activities, but also STEM club activities as well. Um, and you can see in the top right, our distribution across the whole of the UK um, into Scotland and Northern Ireland shown as well. Um, but what I really like to show you is that, so our general users, um, it's completely free from anywhere, anywhere across the world. And this is our map in the bottom right hand corner of um, of where those people, of people that have given us that information, the location of those. So we're, we actually have visitors from 80 countries um, 
of which people have self-declared why they're using the site, of which 60% um, are students across the world who say they're still in education. Um, so it's a huge number of students that we're, we're connecting to worldwide. Um, Go Observing, I said, is the um, interface. So it allows us um, free access to the world's largest robotic telescope. And the Liverpool Telescope, um, through funding through LJMU, allows us 10% um, of the total observing time of the telescope is dedicated to the school's project. Um, and you can see the different things we can do. So primary school users, it's really easy to click a part of the moon and then um, the next night you'll get your observation to download. Um, but what's I think really important is that we offer this connection to this amazing telescope, but um, what's really important is that we also offer ways to engage with it um, and that makes it really accessible. And so I've mentioned primary school users work with the moon. Here you can see some of the different things that we offer, um, whether it's sort of simple activities in the classroom or whether in the top right hand corner we've got project research projects which are open ended um, and they can last over several months and students can really dig deep into the stuff there. Um, and I think it's really important to have those two things and really make it accessible to our users as well as just having the open data. Um, and to go alongside that to help their learning because we have our learn pages, which is entire, um, almost like our own Wikipedia of astronomy. Anything that we mention on the site, we, um, we then refer back to in our learn so that students can keep up to date with what's going on. Um, and then I briefly wanted to talk about, um, as well as the National School of Observatory in the UK and Ireland, we also have a few international projects ongoing at the moment. And we've been, um, one of our more recent ones is working with the Travelling Telescope team in Kenya. Um, so you might have heard of Susan recently, She's, she made the IAU news um, for building this amazing bamboo um, planetarium. And we've been working with them, specifically with the NSO, to um, try and reach out to um, Kenyan schools and one of the issues is that um, quite a lot of Kenyan schools were given um, devices, mobile devices or uh, tablets and don't necessarily have access to computers and so what we're working with is to be able to translate our moon activities that are normally computer based um, into an app um, to allow all those schools in Kenya then um, direct access to the NSO through that. Um, so it's a really exciting project. Um, we've got other projects as well internationally. Um, we work in Thailand, but I won't go into detail um, on those. Um, so really to, um, in terms of our future, in terms of um, big data, what was really important for the success of the National Schools Observatory, it's been going on now for over 15 years, was the schools observatories built into the Liverpool telescope. It was designed with the schools project in mind when the telescope was built and now um, as it's sort of 15 16 years old it's still um, you know a really desirable telescope and over capacity in terms of the number of people that want to use it and so um, the team at uh, Liverpool John Moores are designing the new robotic telescope and this will be a four meter um, mirror um, actually made out of 18 segments you can see the nice hexagonal shape um, in the design. Two, two minutes, uh, Sally. Thank you. Um, and this will be able to, in terms of science, be able to respond much more rapidly um, in under 30 seconds. And again, it will be fully aut autonomous. Um, and so, like I said, the success of the NSO originally was building it into the Liverpool t Telescope from the start. And we're doing the same now with the um, new robotic telescope. It's working with the engineers and working out with this extreme data rate that will come from the new telescope, how we can make that work with the school's observatory that we've already got um, and how we go forward with that. Um, and really just to finish up and say that um, the, our strategy is all around um, our mission, access to the universe for all. And I think what the NSO allows is, is exactly that. It's not just for all our users worldwide, have completely free and open access to all of our archive data. Um, but it's more than that. It's more than just making it open. It's all of the activities and the STEM activities um, that come for free as well. Um, so I really hope that we do, um, you know, work towards our mission of accessing the universe for all. 
And just on the right are some of my details if you want to connect with. I mentioned that some of our international projects and we're really open to working with as many countries as possible. So please um, feel free to connect with me either in the questions or later and we can speak more. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Sally. I, I, you are great, just in time, better than great. And um, I don't know if Paulo is there. Remember, you have uh, questions at the Q and A tool at the bottom of the webinar. If you want to write the answer, uh, you can write it. And uh, at the end of the session, we will select the answers or we reproduce on loud the answer, the questions and you will have the opportunity to answer to everyone. Paulo, are you there? Can you take the post? Well, if not, the next, the next speaker is Cynthia Quinteros. Cynthia, are you there? Yeah. Well, I can see at least your, your presentation. Cynthia, um, well, she's from Argentina, but this presentation is, uh, <laughs> is connected with the, the University of Groningen in Germany. And the title is uh, Difficulties in Astronomy Teaching uh, in Argentinian Education, uh, education uh, Systems. Um, well, Cynthia? The presentation is uh, very good. If you want to uh, turn on your camera, it will be great. And uh, well, your stage. Thank you very much. Uh, my camera is on. Can you cannot see me. You say you cannot see me? Yes, Cynthia, we can see you now. Ah, yes. okay, perfect, perfect. Okay, thank you. Thanks for the for the opportunity of being here. Good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are. Uh, my name is Cynthia Quiteros, and I will be presenting an analysis, analysis that we have conducted with Diego Valperin. Uh, first of all, let me briefly mention that I speak on behalf of an education program that is already more than 15 years old located in the south of Argentina, which has been supported by national universities and sponsored by different sources of funding. The project aims at promoting education and dissemination of astronomy, involving people in building their own knowledge by means of meaningful experiences and scientific methodology. Uh, to achieve that goal, uh, we form and consolidate groups of secondary students to learn astronomy and simultaneously to share their knowledge with others. In this way, other audiences can be reached and the effect is multiplicative. We also work with pre-service and in-service teachers, listening to their insights and on the topics uh, of astronomy and helping them with tools and resources to design their professional practice. The core of the project is in interdisciplinary, involving teachers, both university and high school, as well as scientists, both natural and social scientists. And some of us have even been involved in some scientific publication on ast uh, publications on astronomy didactics. And in that context, an evaluation of the current state of astronomy education is what we present in the following. So before starting, we should mention which are the contents specifically advised by the National Education Ministry uh, to be taught at the schools of the country. It is also worth mentioning that those are not mandatory since the structure of provinces that organize our country also take their own decisions in this regard. They are basically the everyday phenomena like day and night, seasons, moon phases, planets in a solar neighborhood, nothing too complex. Uh, already in the level of high school, the guidelines from the ministry include some more complex phenomena like stars at the main sequence. Uh, that are tackled in specific subjects like chemistry and physics. And it is also worth highlighting the situation of our country regarding research experience in the field of astronomy didactics and the presence of projects with decades long experience in the topic. Being fair with all of them will require an extensive review of the different proposals, which unfortunately is not our aim today, but to partially compensate this we have included a couple of relevant publications by some of the professional leading those initiatives. I will show you the reference at the end. 
So regarding the topic of the talk itself, difficulties in astronomy teaching in the Argentinian school, there have been previous attempts to drive the attention towards this issue in our country, both in 2008 and 2013. So this is a sort of an update that includes some unconsidered aspects. And finally, which are those difficulties that we have referred to? Well, to answer this question, we have organized the ideas uh, in this map that I am showing. As you can see, we observe obstacles for a significant learning in different planes in teachers' formation. This is to say teachers in pre-service, teachers' resources, with which we mean uh, the tools that teachers have at hand to propose attractive, engaging, and scientifically precise didactic proposals. And finally, the approach uh, with the later, we refer to the fact that some of the topics may be identified to be taught in elementary school are usually taught using heliocentrism theory, which in our opinion is detrimental of a necessary significant learning to then build a more complex approach in the future and then to swap to it in a comprehensive manner. We understand these three planes are in principle related to two main aspects that are the ones I will discuss a little further, which are the resources and the approach. When you look for attractive proposals to teach these astronomical topics, there is plenty of content available, both in educative textbooks and in general media. Keeping aside non-scientific theories, which we won't be speaking about, we can mention four categories of difficulties. Here we are focusing in a recent analysis of multimedia resources, such as YouTube videos as a follow-up study of the textbooks that we have performed and have been performed by many authors in the recent past. Firstly, it is worth mentioning that for Spanish speakers and mainly focusing on teachers that may not be proficient in other languages, one obvious obstacle is that the content of some really high quality is out of the scope. In addition, when looking for resources in Spanish, it is quite often to find proposals from European countries. Spain will be a perfect example of that, which of course includes some references to the Northern Hemisphere sky. Here I show an example, <clears throat> sorry, taken from a video explaining the trajectory of the sun in the Northern and Southern uh, sky during the equinox. The two images correspond to different shots of the video in which the audio correctly explain, explains the, how the, the sun uh, rises exactly from the east and sets at the west, from the, but the trajectory covers left to right in the two hemispheres, which is an example of these wrong extrapolations. We claim that these contradictions between the supposedly academic content, let's say, proposed by the teacher of the course and the student's experience, if, if not properly spot, will do nothing but reinforce the gap already ex reported to exist between the scholar content and their everyday intuition, mainly preventing the necessary reflection to occur. Additionally, we have surveyed some resources, especially designed for children, finding an overwhelming amount of mistakes, for instance, the identification of the moon strictly to the night, but also including problems in didactic transposition, mentioning light blue skies when cartoon characters are floating in the deep space. Speaking about the approach, as we mentioned before, alternative to the heliocentric approach disregarding the age of the kids, we propose, as it has been already documented for many authors, and we have been working in this line for the years of the project, that the topocentric approach that emphasizes the observer's experience and relates scientific content with personal experiences promotes better results involving the subject in direct skylines and becoming the knowledge accessible by one's own experience by using scientific methodology. Of course, the final explanation for the, some of these phenomena like day and night or seasons do arise on the movement of the earth, either the spin or the translation around the sun. Nevertheless, we can perfectly describe the phenomena using the topocentric point of view until the students are ready to extrapolate their conclusions to other more complex systems of reference. In addition, phenomena like the moon phases are only understandable from a topocentric point of view. So then why not to shift our approach not only for elementary and secondary 
students, but also for pre-service features to make it easier for the observer that upon uh, Owen's experience build explanations about the natural phenomena around. And to sum up, Cynthia. Yeah, thank you. To sum up as a take home message, we would like to leave these highlights. Achieving an educative proposal of good quality arises on making it experienceable, enjoyable, understandable, achievable, and scientifically supported. There are promising perspectives in the field and even when there are wonderful initiatives sparkling across the country in Argentina, we need the joint effort from natural and so social scientists, but mainly from teachers whose expertise should guide any alternative proposal. And leaving the main references that we have used for this perspective in the screen, I would like to thank you all for your attention and I am open for any questions. Thank you very much, Cynthia. Very nice talk. And um, well, as you know, the questions will be at the end of the, of the session. Uh, now uh, we invite the next speaker is uh, Hakim Luffy Malasan. I hope uh, that the pronunciation is more or less good. Um, yes, correct. Okay. <laughs> and um, thank you, thank you. Uh, he is from Indonesia, I think, but yes, he will talk about uh, a, a, a war program. Um, and the title of this uh, contribution is Empowering Science Teachers in Indonesia through NASA Workshops. Hakim? Here. Okay, Your thank time. you very much, Beatrice. Uh, good afternoon, good morning. Uh, in well, Indonesia, it is afternoon now, evening. Uh, but I like to take this opportunity actually to give an expose about the how we empower the science teacher in Indonesia through the NASA workshop, or well known as an International Astronomical Union a Network Astronomy for Secondary Education or School Education. So let me go through the first. Uh, when we talk about astronomy among the students. We all know that uh, for maybe most of the uh, young people all over the world, since these 20 years, we witnessing a significant increase of interest in space science, especially in astronomy. But in the case of Indonesia, uh, it is interesting to see that what is attractive for the students actually the event of Astronomical Olympiad. Uh, we may think that uh, Olympiad is only for gifted students, but actually it is participated by common students in Indonesia. The reason is because in Indonesia, astronomy is not independent of uh, independent subject. It may possibly be uh, incorporated in physics, earth and space science, and interestingly, in geography, uh, which all we know that geography is a social subject. So uh, we may see in Indonesia, we still see that students uh, still fears of science and math, and we feel that this is due to little chance to enjoy astronomy in a high school uh, level. So there's basically no uh, actually problem, big problem for Indonesian students because they are, part, active, uh, they are participating actively in any events. The problem is on the teacher side. So the teachers feel that the increasing level of public interest, especially younger generation on astronomical events is, has been constantly observed by them from time to time. But uh, when they, they're aware that astronomy course is not included in primary and secondary education curricula, so the science teacher in the secondary level are somewhat desperate and basically they are not capable in playing a role in science related to space. And uh, well, for, for, for such a fast country like Indonesia, number of planetaria and public observatory is still limited. So in this respect, for such a, a fast country with over 270 million population of Indonesia, so the IEU, uh, NASA was uh, objective is to train science teacher in a very practical way is very much needed. So NASA workshop provide effective means for teacher to practice a simple practical tools developed by them, their own and actually use this uh, for doing real activities such, such as observation of astronomical objects and phenomena. So I'm going to present you actually a report on what uh, have been done in Indonesia by NASA since 2016. So uh, Beatrice, you, can you recognize your face in that picture? So you were in Indonesia in 2016 with Rosa. Yeah, yeah. In, the, in the happy, the happy days yeah, yeah. when we traveled. Yeah, it was in Malang City. And yes, it was a uh, uh, first one. It's really first uh, NASA training in Indonesia, participated by 34 
uh, enthusiast participants. And I think NASA is very keen to identify that Indonesia is a fast country with many artifacts, many uh, archeo archeological sites. So that's why uh, incorporating archeological sites and try to investigate astronomical aspects is something uh, very restricting uh, for NASA training of NASA workshop in Indonesia. It is also exposed in the newspaper. And in 2018 and 2019, activities uh, has been uh, hosted mostly by my institute. I'm from Institute of Technology Sumatra. Uh, new astronomy actually department has been established there. So this picture shows you the activities uh, participated by uh, 18 to 19 selected teachers in Indonesia. They are uh, lecturers, uh, workshop by many instructors, and we always also put the excursion to uh, museum and archaeological site. And we also always end it with the well handover of certificate to the to the uh, science teacher who actively participate in this. Uh, this is the, the picture shows you activities in 2019. We enjoy very much on site workshop, which is uh, very valuable for the teachers because, uh, as you see here, they can uh, come and visit and actually engage and learn. That is very important here. That cannot be replaced by any other means. So we also thanks to many uh, foreign uh, instructors who came to Indonesia. And as you know, this instructor uh, proliferation is also uh, striking in Indonesia because starting from the first NASA, there has been uh, about uh, more than 20 local instructor has been produced and it's multiplying from time to time. So these are the instructors in my universities, mostly are uh, universities uh, lecturers and also some of them from coming from other university, they, they involve so much in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the workshop and the training process. 18 participants in 2018 and 21 participants in 2019. So uh, the, 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 the activity comprised of lectures, workshops and uh, excursion. Yes, uh, the, there, there, there are 10 selected topics that mostly uh, based on identification identification of requirements by Indonesian teachers to introduce astronomy to the high school students. So these are a picture of the activity. Uh, teachers are very enthusiastic in uh, constructing tools with uh, recycled materials and try to use and act as a part of this uh, engagement of the learning. And they are very excited because actually they, are, they can introduce this to their uh, pupils and students back to their schools. So what I'd like to stress in this uh, opportunity is actually a new, uh, well, new way on uh, uh, introducing a technique for, for, for giving a, a, a training for the student. So the NASA workshop made significant contribution to improve the understanding and teaching uh, abilities of teachers in Indonesia and provide facility to make practical tools that can support a uh, teacher, uh, especially to learn and to uh, give a, education to the students. So as in case of Bandung in 2020, this is the first online NASA course and workshop despite COVID-19 pandemic. So uh, it was held in Institute of Technology Bandung as a host uh, together with IPERA, Institute of Technology Sumatra. So it's a fully online mode with Zoom with 22 hours uh, uh, work or, 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 or lectures and comprised of still the same composition and uh, lecture, workshop, and of course, uh, practical uh, observation. So what I'd like to stress here, there were 74 participants out of 130 registrants, and this include from Java Island, outside Java Island and professions. Teachers are not only in astronomy, but also mathematics and physics teacher. College students, high school students, most of them are member of amateur astronomy communities, actually making us feel very rewarding with this number of uh, participants. This is the opening session showing you how effective we do it with, uh, with Zoom or with online way, in online fashion. So two weeks before the course, we distribute all the materials through post office. And some of them, they have to build by themselves and they, they are, uh, of course, earnestly and participate in this. And for the entire course, participants make 10 pitching state, uh, including sundial, star demonstrator, ruler, solar structure of the workshop, and and, and rocket from the workshop. While for activities need to be done outside and need interaction, we replaced it by displaying a demo videos from NASA and use it effectively uh, to convey all this material to the participants. These are some of the pictures showing you. The student create this under our guidance through all through the network. 
and it's quite effective for them. So uh, this is one new feature that I'd like to introduce you. Uh, we try to set up a telescope in Lampung province, which is in the eastern part of the Two minutes, part of okay. yeah. Yes. And using a mid, a simple telescope with the CCD camera and all sky camera, we will be able, actually, we, we, we successfully able to uh, actually stream all the image to the participants. And they were so enthusiastic and excited to see. Some of them, uh, for example, seen the, uh, they, 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 they saw um, Saturn and Jupiter for the first time in their lifetime. So they're quite excited with this. So as a postscript, uh, some of the participants had known previous NASA in Malang and Lampung, although they were very interested before, but they were unable to participate due to the cost of accommodation and long distance. When they heard about online NASA, they were very excited and grateful to be able to truly join the course. So NASA course provides an overview of how to teach astronomy uh, easier to the students, especially with the help of teaching aids from the workshop and the material is very cheap and be easily made. So the amateur astronomy community usually uh, have an event for the children and most of them run out of ideas how to make astronomy more interesting. NASA course helped them very much to make it better for the, uh, for the member and for the children. And lastly, what the NASA course provided is beyond their expectation. So they feel education, engagement and learning. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to you, a nice talk. As you know, mm -hmm. I'm involved in NASA program, so very happy to hear that you, you are happy with this, uh, with this program. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, uh, you. Well, let's go to the, to the next uh, talk, next contribution by Walter Guevara Day. Hola, Walter, estás allí? Sí, acá estoy. Oh, hello, how are you? Uh, yeah. Walter is from the Universidad de Nacional Mayor de San Marcos in Peru. So we are here in Latin America. And the talk uh, by Walter is the use of virtual teaching in astronomy under graduate courses. Walter, your time. Uh, okay. Good morning, everyone. I speak in Spanish. My presentation is in, in English. Ok. Eh, bien. Eh. ¿Todo bien? Bien, ahora sí. sí. Perfecto. Eh, mi presentación es relacionada a la enseñanza de la astronomía en esta época de pandemia que tenemos. Antiguamente, este, las clases presenciales eh, de astronomía eh, en, en la Universidad de San Marcos eh, no eran tan intensas como actualmente son a través de las plataformas virtuales, ¿no? ¿Y por qué no eran tan intensas? Porque de alguna manera no había una exigencia del uso de las computadoras, sobre todo en, la, en toda la facultad de, de física, eh, con esto de la pandemia, eh, la Universidad de San Marcos estableció todo un programa de preparación para toda la universidad, para implementar todo el sistema de internet y todo el sistema de eh, eh, aulas virtuales y probar cuál de ellas era la mejor para la universidad. Y eso hizo que eh, tanto la, los docentes como eh, estudiantes y la administración se esfuercen mucho más en la interacción entre el estudiante, el docente y, y la Internet. Es así que eh, se potenció muchas cosas y entre ellas eh, las calidades y particularidades de la enseñanza virtual. Eh, es así que se comenzó a usar... Eh, eh, se, se hizo un contrato, la universidad hizo un contrato con Google para el uso este, de toda la plataforma Classroom eh, y la plataforma Google Meet, ¿no? para poder enseñar a los, a los estudiantes y se preparó a los docentes en, en eso. ¿no? Eh, aquí, por ejemplo, una presentación de, de, 
en Google Meet eh, a los jóvenes que, que comenzamos a, a, a trabajar con esta plataforma. ¿no? Eh, se, hubo varias, for, varias plataformas para trabajar, pero al final se escogió este, la plataforma del, del, del Google Classroom debido a que tiene este, varias ventajas con respecto a otras plataformas que en ese momento había que hacerlo lo más rápido posible. ¿no? Eh, luego, este, dentro del curso de este semestre, en, en la Facultad de Ciencias Físicas, se dictó eh, cuatro cursos, ¿no? Introducción a la Astronomía Astrofísica, Física Solar, tópicos avanzados y física de plasma, ¿no? eh, en, la, en la parte de, de introducción a la astronomía se hizo énfasis a, al trabajo que se hace con fotometría y medidas de distancia utilizando eh, varias este, eh, simuladores que existen en, en la web, ¿no? Uno de ellos era o es el simulador CLEA, eh, que utiliza un, un... es bastante antiguo, pero que todavía sigue vigente y, hacer, y hay que hacerles algunas adaptaciones a los sistemas operativos actuales, ¿no? Porque esto funciona en, en sistemas operativos XP eh, antiguos, y en, en 86... Y, y no en 64 bits, entonces se tuvo que hacer varios ajustes para que funcione. Eh, y lo interesante es que es un entorno virtual de manejo del telescopio y, eh, y la parte de análisis fotométrico. Se les preparó a los estudiantes para que trabajen, primero para que implementen el software en sus computadoras y luego para que comiencen a trabajar en la medida de la información de las estrellas, ¿no? El CLEA tiene ya un catálogo de estrellas, las CLEA de sobre todo, para hacer este análisis fotométrico. Eh, como les digo, esto demoró porque había que implementar varias cosas, pero comenzó a funcionar y fue un éxito, la verdad, porque los estudiantes este, cada vez se animaron más, más, y este, actualmente ya lo manejan bastante bien, ¿no? Acá una muestra de los registros que se hacían fotométricos. Ya este es un registro de un trabajo que ya el estudiante está eh, realizando. Eh, y además se, se utilizó también eh, el Astro Image J. El Astro Image J también es un software libre eh, que también tiene algunas características para hacer la fotometría. Eh, y también se primero se capacitó a los estudiantes para que manejen el software y luego ellos comenzaron a hacer el trabajo también sobre la misma región de Pleiades con imágenes proporcionadas por, un, este, por una base de datos de, de imágenes de, de, de astronómicas. Eh, luego en el curso de, solar, de física solar también tiene eh, varios eh, simuladores, uno de ellos es eh, para trabajar la dinámica de las manchas solares, para ver esta rotación solar. Y eh, aquí una muestra de las imágenes que se trabajaban y al final, este, que es lo que ellos este, tenían que encontrar, era un, un ajuste ¿no? de la rotación uh, del sol eh, y se veía que hubo una rotación diferencial. Eh, eh, que funcionó bastante bien y luego se comenzó a trabajar ya con imágenes eh, de, que, que, que existen en la red sobre todo de, de la NASA y de la Agencia Espacial Europea eh, es lo mismo pero antes de eso había que hacer una determinación de coordenadas celiográficas ¿no? entonces todo ese trabajo se tuvo que hacer a través de internet eh, utilizando Google Bit y la plataforma Claro para la para los archivos y la base de datos. ¿no? Eh, hay un simulador más que tiene el CLEA, que es este, para encontrar este, la energía del interior solar, que funciona bastante bien, con ciertas este, aproximaciones, eh, pero que me da una idea de cómo es eh, la, la, este, el comportamiento de 
los fotones dentro del interior solar sobre todo, ¿no? Eh, como les digo, ese es un, un software bastante antiguo, que ya, está, que ya no está operativo. Yo escribí a los autores, me dijeron que lamentablemente ya no lo tienen operativo, pero... Este, Dos minutos, Walter. Eh, gracias. Pero que... Este, bueno, lo, lo tuvimos que adaptar para los sistemas operativos actuales, ¿no? Eh, además, este, para el curso ya de tópicos avanzados utilizamos eh, los ejercicios que tiene también la, la ESA, el ejercicio 6, sobre todo que tiene que ver con la determinación de la masa de un agujero eh, negro, ¿no? eh, que es bastante bueno y, 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 y nos da información este, de cómo es que al final... Eh, 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 yo puedo encontrar una relación de la masa total con la materia oscura que no se, no se determina, ¿no? Lo mismo que es la plataforma del EUHO, ¿no? Que también me determina el peso de las galaxias con la cual también se determina las masas este, eh, las oscuras, ¿no? Eh, aquí está el número de participantes de los cursos, ¿no? eh, en, en relación a astronomía 7, en física solar 4, en tópicos avanzados 11 y en física de plasma 6, todos son de la carrera de lic licenciatura. ¿no? Y aquí los software y la base de datos que utilizamos, ¿no? el Stellarium, Iris, Astroimage, Salsa, Cleo, a través del, de la plataforma Vireo, C2A, todo lo que ustedes ven acá, ¿no? Ejercicio de la NASA, las páginas web, que es donde tengo la, la base de archivo, los archivos de las imágenes eh, astronómicas del Observatorio de las Cumbres. Eh, además, eh, eh, tuvimos que elaborar, porque era parte de la exigencia de los docentes, una página web de, de lo que se hacía y tuvimos que elaborar la página web que la tenemos acá, ¿no? De ciencias espaciales, contenido, astronomía. Y además, este, el WhatsApp, que era lo que necesitábamos para comunicarnos, porque no todo el momento funcionaba bien la, la computadora, y, este, y en algunos instantes teníamos que utilizar el WhatsApp para poder comunicarnos entre los estudiantes. Ya está cumplido el tiempo, Walter. ¿eh? Bien, gracias. Eso era todo. Ok. Ok. Thank you. Thank you very much. Walter, and um, we will follow with the last talk of the session. Is uh, Silen? Silen, are are you there? Silen Chen from the National Astronomical Research Institute of Thailand. Hello. Yes, I can hear your presentation, but not your face. Are you there? And I cannot hear you, neither. Let me do it again. Let me do it again. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, here is Silem. Hello, Silem. How are you? Hello. So, Hi. Now. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hello. Now, yes, everything is fine. Well, this okay. talk, I will uh, share with the people the, the title of the talk, a preliminary study uh, of uh, the impact of high school astronomy research-based learning in Thailand. Silem, your stage. Yep. Thank you. So uh, thank you for the organizers having uh, to agree for me to present here and I will speak about uh, activities in Thailand. It's mainly it's about the research activities there and also a preliminary study. So my name is Silan Cheng and also my co-author Madhupun and also a lot of people behind from all from, all from the National Astronomical Research Institute of Thailand that working very hard to bring this activity for a couple of years already. So just give you some background uh, to understand the situation in Thailand. So Thailand, it's you also know that their educational difference between East and West. And in the East, like Thailand, it's a very traditional uh, Eastern way of teaching. But in my personal opinion, actually, Thailand is actually even more extreme, in my opinion, because they have very large class size. And even they discourage students to ask questions in classroom, in the culture. So this made me very shocked when I arrived in Thailand. And also they teach the teaching focus in class. It's more on exam techniques. So students, it's less emphasized on the understanding. 
And here you see the PISA score uh, of Thailand compared to other countries. And the blue one is the average score in the Thailand is actually quite low there. So it's also because of their, the, the education problem. So luckily that uh, my colleagues and many pioneers in Thailand has developed the national science curriculum in, uh, that include astronomy, uh, including Professor Bobraxer that probably will speak with you in a few days to, um, that helped to make astronomy as part of the national curriculum. That's it's like a compulsory course that all high school students has to take. So, and therefore they're involved teacher trainings that help, we have to help teachers to learn the techniques and therefore they have different levels of teacher training, like beginning level, intermediate level, advanced level. And in the advanced level, the teachers will help to do uh, training to guide students to conduct research programs and with the support of our staff in Thailand. And we also learned the experience from Japan that Thailand is organizing a junior high school students astronomy conference every year. And every year there are about 50 high school students presenting their research or some studies there, which is a very successful event in my opinion. So learning has different, or teaching has different methodologies and they are all suitable suit for different needs. But there has been studies that showing active learnings that are learning that by the students themselves actually can help to improve the performance. So, but we also go through many type of uh, methodologies, but one of the things that we usually talk about is inquiry-based learning. But inquiry-based learning also have different type of inquiry. Like you have to provide, so the role of teacher has been playing from different roles. For example, the, the teacher give all the guidance or like just uh, structure inquiry or like to give everything freely to the students to everything. So different methods has been, has been different way. Uh, but research learning that we are talking, going to talk is more like, like uh, advanced project-based learning. So students has also has to develop their own ideas and to go through look for resources and to seek for help. And it's more like an advanced free inquiry, but also sometimes seeking help from their uh, mentors. So this is a chart showing how the design of the program is look like. So during the advanced training, it's the training. So students will go through the process in a training camp to brainstorm and get a learning of what they need to learn some basics, even some of them probably even don't have basic knowledge about astronomy even, but they will go through some basic learning prince uh, knowledge to establish. And then they will do some brainstorming through peers learning as well. And then through discussions and feedback, they will have to design their research idea. And then there will be like a vigorous discussion among the mentors and then they have to brainstorm the idea and they developed their ideas more rigorously and there have been approval process and this learning through that, that and then they will start doing the research and everyone know doing research is not easy and they will face failures they will face a lot of problems they have to find resources they have to even sometimes they don't know what they're doing actually <laughs> so therefore there have been a lot of problems and they have to grow through them and in about like three to four months time they have developed their project and within that period there will be support by their staff of NARIT and also the teachers to help them. And then they have to go through defense process. And they also, after that, they will have to present the results and then receive criticism. And also they will have problems. Sometimes they will revise the result. And once again, they will have to present their idea in front of everyone. So it's a quite a long process, but the students learn quite a lot in this. And I'm actually going to study about this because it's I when I arrived Thailand, I find it's a big data pool to understand what is this research project is doing and how how effective is this. So therefore, I start to conduct a, pro, a research to study how this research program actually it's it's different from other type of learning like informal learning like planetary visits. So therefore, uh, we ask some. We do some interviews and also conduct some questionnaires, collect some data from different people. Uh, and this one is comparing the data that uh, using the, from the students that who finished the 
research project, and also the planetarium visitors that get the the questions, and we look at their learning behavior, and what do they take away from the activity, and also how they look at science, and also the experience in there. So unfortunately, there it's still a prototype test right now, and the sample size right now is not that big, especially because this year has challenge we, we all face. In. So therefore, the number of data taken is not that big so far, but it also provides some ideas and some observation that we will further test in the more uh, proper run in the future. But something that we observe first is that planetarium visitors might have a stronger motivation than students to join activities. Second is that the students actually become more resourceful after they join the activity than planetarium visitors. And also students might not necessarily finish the project with a stronger interest in astronomy. And then another thing is that research student has a stronger take home impact than just a short term planetarium visitor. And also research students show a more stronger belief in science and technology that is good for the society and also they show that it's, they think it's more useful and science is more useful. But another thing is that we found out that planetarium researchers and research students might have the same experience after joining the activity. The, the, the satisfactory thing that after, from the research and also from the research may be the same, but we have to do more tests to verify the result. Because it's also intercom, it's doing from interview. So we also found out some interesting thing from the uh, data. So first of all, there are quite a big number that. So we we are actually uh, noticed that quite a large amount of people that found disagree or think neutral that science and technology can develop a better society. This is a bit surprising to me. And also that uh, students, they, they, one of the things that they reflect from the program is that they uh, think minutes, that- they're, uh, they're, Silo, Two minutes. Okay, thank you. The, their schools have, they actually, they do a lot, very little experiments in school time. So therefore joining this research project actually is a very big jump from what they're doing in the classroom from the research project that they do now. And they also benefits after they learn this, they think that it's very helpful for them to do presentations and write reports and also, also help them to be more careful collecting data and not just about science, but also about the personal development on interpersonal skills, responsibility, and also self-confidence also improved. And even students had in indicating that maybe want to study astrophysics in university. So this is just a pyramid study and we want to continue to uh, study more and it's just a very beginning step. So uh, we will increase the sample size and also to consider more different cases about, especially about the critical thinking of students and also to compare about with school, normal school developments and also look at more long-term, uh, follow up the long-term of the students, like how they, what they're going to study and their career. And another thing I want to make a note is that this program will probably be available soon in 2021, an international version through the NARIT operated UNESCO International Training Center in astronomy, we call it ICER, but it's a more or like less smaller version scale. So uh, we think that we will want to help to also provide this kind of training to international scale as well. And we are also talking with Boraxa, we will be the next president of the C1 commission to see if we can set up a working group to promote this research-based learning activities globally. Thank you so much. Thank you, Silo. Just in time, as usual. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we are at the end of the, of the session, and now it's time of uh, some questions, and the speakers has the opportunity to, be, uh, to open the cameras. All, all of you are now as co-hosts. And uh, for, uh, there are a general question for all of you. If you want to turn on the cameras, it will be great because like this, we can see your faces. Um, I think some of thank us, you. Uh, uh, a general question. Remember, we have just 10 minutes for all. But the general question, can you open the cameras or not, Miriana? I cannot. 
Oh, why? You have all the permissions. Uh, wait a minute, Mediana. No, no, you know. have not. Sorry, sorry. May, mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you will wake up. Um, there are a general question for Miriana and Cynthia and all the speakers about the cooperation with non-English speakers. What, uh, what are your ideas or your suggestions about that topic, which is very important if you want to spread the astronomy word? So, please. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, the question uh, arrived almost for all, so uh, start one of you and uh, give your, share your thought about the cooperation with non-English speakers. So actually one thing that uh, we also think <coughs> and work is to identify contact points in different countries. So every country would have some good contact points and it has been already done by different IU office like OAO, OAE. So this office can actually help to like acting as a resources hub or like a like a contact point to connect with different people. So when for, for example when we develop resources in English or other language, we can actually through that person to help to uh, have some kind of localizations if necessary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from my side, I, I think uh, I agree that the language barrier is really a big uh, issue that we have, and it's not really easy to deal with it uh, in in the countries where we have a big diversity, like here in Ethiopia, where we have more than 80 languages. Uh, we can really see the difficulties of that uh, at the higher uh, education level at the universities because people are coming uh, to the universities from different uh, regions. Uh, the official language is English to teach. But then we can see clearly that the, for the for the students, uh, it's a double work uh, to understand the matter that we are teaching and then to uh, really uh, understand it in English. And it's a very, very big problem. So I think uh, uh, the only way is really trying to um, work more on the diversity in terms of um, benefiting uh, as many languages as possible and uh, promoting uh, uh, the educational materials on the uh, local languages in the same time uh, trying to strength the to strengthen the, the level of uh, English so that uh, people can uh, manage with it uh, when it's needed but I do think that education uh, not only in English or French uh, or Chinese uh, but on the local <laughs> language is extremely important also for maintaining the diversity and the heritage that we have and uh, Cynthia or Hakim? Yes, uh, Beatrice, in Indonesia, thanks to NASA, I think what uh, the initiative of NASA is very good when uh, Rosa and you asked us to actually uh, translate all the NASA materials into Indonesian language. And as you know, Indonesia is a fast country with uh, more than 200 local language. So what we do, actually, we cooperate with the teacher, uh, especially senior high school teachers, to translate partly of this NASA material, which is already introduced to Indonesia, into the uh, local language. And what is interesting, and maybe later I would like to show you sometimes, some of them are inspired by this NASA material and would like to investigate the local wisdom that related to the local EP in the plant. So when they try to incorporate NASA material with the local wisdom, they have to use their, of course, local language. In that case, uh, the, the trainer of NASA actually act as a translator from Indonesian to local language, vice versa, and local language to Indonesia. And then we might have some idea to, of course, uh, bring it up to English and then make it available to a wider audience. That is what we do in Indonesia. Uh, Sally, Sally, do you want to add something? Cynthia has problems with the connection, but I believe that Sally is there. Um, there's other, uh, between comment and a question about the, um, the implementation of an, an emergency kit that includes diversity and the ambition to create an universal resource bank uh, with people who can donate some of their time to adapt the proposals 
etc. Uh, I think there are uh, many people on the world working in uh, resource banks and resource repositories, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Silen or, or Miriana? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely, I think resources is a very important thing. And mm -hmm. just at the beginning of the talk, I think John Herschel also mentioned about the strategic plan of the IU, and this thing will be uh, definitely a very important thing. But one, one of the problems that I also see is that always there are many resources are uh, duplicating or very similar has been produced. I think that uh, we, we, sh we should actually also have more like uh, not just inclusiveness, but also we try to like when we have the resources repository, we can also like reuse other people's materials that not just recreating what we have right now. Yes, yeah. I, I think I'm second to 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 to, to Zealand. And what we do in Indonesia actually, we try to uh, include the astronomical community actually to create these resources. So basically, universities or uh, higher education center does not uh, actually keep the repository of local resources, but the community, the communicator, actually, they have a very good uh, resource and they keep it, they maintain it uh, electronically and try to reach uh, as, uh, as wide as possible to remote area to make it available for the people in the remote area in order to introduce astronomy. So, uh, uh, well, I may see to up to seven, up to some degree, it works actually in Indonesia for this. Yeah, I think uh, from my side, uh, I think it's a very important point. Uh, it's a bit uh, one of the things that we are working currently under the African Astronomical Society and uh, the Science Committee. We are now on the way of creating what we call Science Portal. And this science portal is a bit, um, let's say, as a repository or a database where we want to put all the in different uh, different um, uh, sectors, uh, let's say, starting from research, but also human capacity building, the teaching materials, uh, so that uh, we can uh, have the place where the material will be uh, will be there. Because uh, as we know, there are many initiatives that we can benefit from. Very often we uh, duplicate the efforts uh, because uh, we are not aware of the work that has been done already. So I do think that maybe uh, under the IAU that is uh, uh, um, the highest professional body that we have in our field, uh, it would be good to have a sort of uh, database repository that can collect, let's say, all the information material that we are uh, uh, working on because there is there is a lot, you know, and then definitely we all can benefit from, from that. Well, we, we have not uh, more time, but a, a last um, question, Silen, is about, there are, there are personal questions like, uh, can we help and we, can we cooperate each other? Please uh, put the, the answers at the Q&A &A, uh, resource because we will collect all these and yes. um, try to answer. But the last uh, comment, uh, Silen, is about, uh, yeah? Uh, wait a minute, Pablo. One more, one more question. It's about uh, your feeling, if you want, about the standard test to evaluate the level of the or the quality of education, like PISA. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you have any, 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 any idea about uh, if they are effective or not? If that, if the survey is really good for all the uh, globe or not? Or perhaps uh, Paolo Bretones wants to, to answer this, uh, this question. Okay, I, I'd like first to thank you very much for the invitation. And I, I am sorry because of a, I had problems with my internet net here, right? So first, uh, congratulations for the meeting. And for this section, I would like to be there. I'm very happy to participate anyway. And because uh, to incentivate uh, more studies about astronomy education research, uh, most of you have uh, made many comments about methodologies, about resources, but I think that we have to promote more and more uh, things about theoretical frameworks or uh, questions about how to, how to see, about uh, what to study, about what to teachers who are teaching, how students are learning things about this, right? 
about the PISA, it's very, very difficult because it's a question of curriculum. It's a question of uh, how to evaluate, how to, to, to see about many countries, about the culture, about what the curriculum means of the students. Students are learning about science at all, or specifically on astronomy or STEM. So uh, more than this, I'd like to make a comment about a very, very good efforts of all of you. Uh, my congratulations, and particularly with C. Uh, Leung about the uh, theoretical frameworks, about the reference, but to analyze how the teachers are teaching and how do the students are learning. Very interesting about the qualitative or quantitative research. And I'd Sorry, like Paulo, to... Paulo, we have no time. We are uh, a bit uh, late. No, okay, okay. <laughs> promote more meetings about astronomy education okay. research as we have in the commission, and we'd like to continue for, m for many years, okay? So uh, that's it. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Okay, yeah. well, um, as we are completely out of time, we are half an hour delayed, uh, mm -hmm. I propose to have a break here. Um, remember, we are uh, half an hour uh, late in the, in the schedule, so the next activity will be a, a, an invited talk by Nestor Camino. Um, if you agree, we will meet each other 10 to 11 in Argentina, 10 to whatever in, <laughs> in the rest of the world. And um, yes, uh, 10 minutes before the hour. Uh, uh, are you in agreement? Uh, it's okay to you? Because we need to, to re uh, recover some time. So the invited okay, talk instead of four, um, uh, two p.m. Uh, instead of two p.m. in Greenwich UTC, uh, mm -hmm. ten to two. Okay, ten to yeah. two. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. See you in twenty minutes. Twenty minutes. Thank you, everybody. Bye. -bye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, the speakers of this night.